just like my last video where I did my top 20, $20 knives, this time I'm gonna go ahead and double it. So I'm gonna show you 40 of my favorite everyday carry knives that you can absolutely find, $40. Hey, how you doing? If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. My name is Jay. Go ahead and consider clicking on that subscribe if you're looking for knife reviews. They get right to the point. Please just keep in mind though that prices, well, they do tend to change. So I don't know if you're watching this a year from now. Yeah, it's totally possible that some of these knives, they might not even be in this price range anymore. And of course, I'm going to make it easy for you to buy any of the knives I show you today. So I'll have all the links listed down below with like the prices and if there's any coupon codes. Hey, I hope you're ready. We're getting started. Number 40 I've got from CRKT. It's the BT Fighter. I really do appreciate its unique design. It's unlike any other knife that I own. And of course, it's a ton of fun to fidget. But as a functional tool, uh, you know, it could be better. It's just kind of awkward to cut with and you know it's a knife so that's pretty important number 39 i got from kubi this is the ku 158 flash it does have a good looking blade and the action is oh yeah it's good to go but the handle uh, it's kind of it's kind of blocky so using this for like an extended period of time it, it's not going to be the most comfortable in hand number 38 i got from artisan cutlery that's the arroyo this micarta version is going to be a little bit more expensive, but go and check out the uh, the G10 versions. Or, oh, there's these really good-looking uh, acrylic scales over at White Mountain Knives, and you can use my coupon code for 10% off, which is just uh, Lefty Love. If I was a bigger fan of, like, the trailing point style of blade, this would definitely be a little bit higher up on my list because the rest of the knife, oh, yeah, it's solid, and it really is a good design. 37 from Victorinox. Yeah, that's the Midnight Mini Champ. Now, I have the Sapphire one, which is going to cost a little bit more than the uh, version with the red scales. Now, with the uh, 17 functions, I faithfully carried this thing like every day for a few years. But I started to realize that, you know, these tools, they're almost a little bit too small for some stuff, if you know what I mean. I mean, it's still great to have, like if you're wearing like shorts or sweats, something like that. And I absolutely love just love like the flashlight and the uh, ink pen combo. 36, I got from K-Bar. That's the 7505. Doesn't this knife just look totally out of place in this price bracket? I mean, it looks like it would cost a bit more. And it's kind of a shame that they kind of wasted this, uh, this cool of a design by giving it such super budget materials. I mean, come on, these, they're polymer scales. I would just love to see... Oh man, an upgraded version of this. Can you imagine if this had like an M390 blade and maybe like, I don't know, titanium or micarta scales? You know, of course the price would be a little bit higher, but hey, I for one would pay more for that. 35 from CRKT. That's the Torea. You know what? I was really surprised to see that you can still buy these over at uh, Blade HQ because I thought they were discontinued like a long time ago. Now, you know, it has bolsters, so of course I'm going to like it, but it does come, it does not have a pocket clip and you're only going to get just the one thumb stud and the blade steel is just 7CR. Number 34, I got from Essie. Yeah, it's going to be this little guy, the Zancudo. This is just like a really nice kind of bare bones sort of frame lock with a really good looking spear point blade. 33, I got another Kubi for you. It's going to be the KU 219 Victory. Now, at first, I honestly did not think that I would like this handle, but it's actually it's actually pretty, pretty comfortable in hand. Oh, and the action. Oh, man, yeah, that action is great. 32, from Boker, it's going to be the Kalishnikov Automatic. This is one of the best, like, budget automatic knives out there with did you see that it is like just super strong hard hitting auto action i want to do that one more time i mean my whole arm shakes when i do that now i know that everybody is including like a pouch with their knives nowadays but i'm going to tell you right now that boker's pouch 
is by far the best. I mean, look at that inside. You could easily fit like three or four knives in there. 31. How about another CRKT? Yep, that's a shenanigan. You know, I probably don't even need to say that this is a Ken Onion design because you, it's pretty obvious just by looking at it. It's all got, it's got its bunch of its trademark features. And I think that the one position pocket clip, I think that killed this knife because it had, it had a lot of potential. And then of course, yeah, you got that on the side of it. You know, just in case you forgot who, whose design this is, sitting at 30. I got artisan cutlery. It's the small tradition. You know, I don't think that this knife really did get the attention that it uh, that it deserves because the action, uh, you know, it's uh, it's okay. But this is one of those knives that really does need a detent ramp because the the blade. Oh yeah, it gets it gets hung up on the close like every single time. Number twenty nine. I got another from CRKT. It's the M sixteen. Now, if you could just pretend that, that this is the 03Z with the uh, GRN scales, because mine is actually the 03S with aluminum, but the blade steel is still going to be exactly the same at OS 8. I honestly don't think that this knife will ever be discontinued. I mean, it was the first model to ever feature a flipper tab. 28 from Tuya Knife. It's the Bruiser. I think that this is kind of a classic sort of budget knife. It's been around for a long time and it has a name that is just, it's absolutely perfect because this knife doesn't, it, it looks like a bruiser, doesn't it? And it's a pocket pig though, because it does take up quite a bit of room. If they ever made a smaller version of this, oh man, I would be first in line to try that baby out. How about 27 from Kershaw? That's the leak. Big, big seller for Kershaw right here. And this is more like a, this really is more like a scalpel than anything else, which I guess for a knife, that's a compliment. But it's absolutely a light duty knife that is without question, one of the best slicers that I own. 26, how about from CJRB? It's the Rampart. I read in the description of this, which I'm assuming it was probably written by someone at CJRB and they went ahead and described the handle as being ergonomic. I kid you not, which I guess, you know, if you consider, if you consider a straight handle ergonomic, okay. But for some reason, I thought that, I thought that getting this with uh, copper scales, I thought that was a good idea because, you know, I always, always wanted a boat anchor that I could use to cut stuff. At 25, I got the Assassin from Harns. Look, if you're into like, if you're into the slender stuff, oh yeah, this is your knife. It, because it's long and it really does, it carries nice in pocket and the action, oh my God, it is out of this world. At 24, let's go ahead and do the buck 110. If you need something reliable that you could just like beat the heck out of it, oh, the 110, yeah, it could, it can definitely take it. I'm not talking about any kind of abuse. This is just a good old-fashioned American-made knife that you can use to uh, get stuff done. 23 is going to be from Kershaw. That's the induction. This has a lock that was actually designed by G&G Hawk. And I seriously, I seriously forgot how much fun that this thing is to fidget, even though man, it doesn't sound like, like when I'm opening it, it sounds like I'm like, cracking my femur in half or something but you know i'm sure that they had a good reason to discontinue this i just still don't understand it 22 is going to be an exclusive from boker plus it's the strike now here's another budget automatic but i think that i think that this one is just a is a better value than the uh, kalishnikov that i showed earlier i mean it even has look at that it even has a safety lock which for me yeah that's that's a really important feature on an automatic number 21 i got the best tech warwolf man i still cannot believe that they went ahead and discontinued this thing and i'm not even that big of a fan of like the harpoon blade shape but look at it it just it really does work here and really quick if you're liking this video so far go ahead and just let me know by leaving a thumbs up number 20 from civivi it's the mini bull mastiff.
this knife, it's kind of a novelty, you know, for me. It's fun to fidget. I mean, action is just incredible, but it's just, it's not really going to be the first knife that I reach for when I need to go ahead and cut something. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just kind of telling it like it is. 19, it's going to be another exclusive. It's the CJRB Small Feldspar. No, I certainly don't love this as much as its bigger brother. But I think that this is good to have for like those days when you just need to maybe carry something a little bit smaller. Number 18 from K-Bar, it's the Dozier. You know, I went ahead and put on this quick thumb stud and I did not realize until just now how friggin' ridiculous it looks on here. I'm going to switch it back to the other one. But what's not to like? I mean, it's every bit the same as the original, except it's got an upgraded D2 steel blade. Number 17 is going to be the Chronic from Civivi. The only thing I'm going to say about this knife is that it is, it's just the perfect, like, light duty office carry knife. 16 from Victorinox. It's the Alox Pioneer X. I think this is the perfect size at about 93 millimeters. And you know, it's got about nine, nine different uh, functions here. And I think it has, these are the absolute best pair of scissors on any Swiss Army knife that I've used. Number 15, I got from Spyderco. It's the Tenacious Lightweight. Considering that this blade is actually, it's riding on, on washers, and that action is just, it is so good. And have you seen the new, there's that new S35VN version. I, you know, I'm kind of on the fence about whether or not I'm going to pick one up. Sitting at 14 from Civivi, it's the Wyvern. Now this knife has what I like to call the trifecta. It's got, it has two different deployment methods. So the thumb hole or the uh, flipper tab. And it even has a really nice usable forward finger choil. And don't you just love how these... Man, how these scales kind of feel in hand. Like with the contoured shape, it almost kind of reminds me of like holding an open L. Number 13 from CRKT, it's the Large Pilar. You know, I thought that people would be way more interested in picking up a Pilar with a black blade, but I guess not because as of this recording, yeah, you can still, you can still buy these. 12 is going to be from Steel Will. It's the mini cut jack. Now this has about, yeah, it has about zero, zero fidget factor. So, you know, it being in this spot is going to be really based on kind of how it feels in my hand and its cutting ability, which, yeah, it's all good. Number 11 is going to be the Ortis from Civivi. Look, basically, this is just a dogma. The difference being that it's just, it's slightly shorter overall, and it has a totally different blade steel in the 9CR. All right, we're getting down to it. At starting off the top 10, it's going to be the Civivi Badlands Vagabond. Can I tell you, I really like, I really like having the thumb studs here instead of like the thumb hole on the Ortis I just showed you. Because for me, anyway... Oh, it is just, it's so much easier for me to flick open. Number nine, I've got the Ontario Rat 1. Really, I got nothing new to add to the conversation about this knife. All I can say is that regardless of the type of knives that you're into, this is always, always going to be a, uh, a good choice for a user. So then, of course, at number eight is going to be followed up by the Rat 2. So basically what I said about the rat one is just go ahead and apply it here in the seven spot. I got the backlash from Civivi. I really think that this would be like a solid choice for someone that's maybe, you know, that's maybe not necessarily a knife collector, but you're just looking for that one great knife to use every day. And it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. Number six is almost a Civivi. It's the Sencut Scepter. This little guy definitely has my vote for like one of the best, one of the best like budget knives of the year. I know. And we're only in like what the fifth month top five. Here we go from Civivi. It's the dogma. Usually at this, at this price point, you know, you would 
typically get a, a 9CR steel blade, but this is one of the least expensive D2 Civivis that's out there. And it's another knife that has, for me, the trifecta because it's got the two different uh, deployment options and, yeah, that really nice forward finger tool. God, do I love that clip point. Number four is going to be the Pilar 3 from CRKT. Now, you can really tell, at least to me, that CRKT wanted to, uh, they really wanted to do this one right because I have not been able to find like any kind of fit and finish issues or, you know, anything with the quality and the action. Oh my God, the action is just, is great. The detent must be absolutely dialed in perfectly. Number three, I got both versions of the Brazen from Civivi. Now this is very unique because it is the, so far anyway, the only Civivi that's offered in two totally different blades. You can get, you see the drop point up on top in the 14C28N. Well, the standard version is, this is the Damascus, obviously. And then the Tonto is going to be in uh, D2 steel. Now, both both are great. They really are. But I think, I personally think that the drop point, it is an absolute home run. And I want to own every possible color and blade finish of this. There's just only one thing that I wish it had. And that being a usable, like, forward finger choil. Now, these last two are pretty much interchangeable. But at number two, I went ahead and put the Feldspar from CJRB. Man, I really like these, uh, the blacked out versions with that red pivot collar. And I was, I was kind of surprised to see that the, the barrel spacers, yeah, they're, they're satin and they did not make them red to match the pivot collar. Man, that would have looked so good. Before I go ahead and show you my number one, I'd love to know what are some of your favorite uh, $40 knives. Go ahead and just list as many as you possibly can down in the comments below. All right, you ready to see it? Number one is probably not going to be a surprise for most of you, but yeah, it's the Praxis from Civivi. All right, I'm going to keep this simple because it's one of the very first Civivi knives that was ever released, and I think it's still one of the best. All right, up on the screen now is going to be a video that I did personally pick out for you to go ahead and watch next. And hey, don't forget to go ahead and click on that subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I got to go and I'll see you at the next video. See you guys. Take care.